Welcome to Engineering Roundtable. I'm Nick, and if you remember from the last episode that I posted, which was a while ago, I started building a pinball machine. I thought that today would be a good chance to put together the actual cabinet of the pinball machine. I know it's not an electronics project, but I thought you guys might want to get a peek at what actually goes into building the uh, structural part of the machine, because we don't do a lot of woodworking on the site, for obvious reasons, I guess. So let's go to the hardware store, pick up some parts, and then bring them back here to my home shop and put together the pinball machine. Hopefully at the end of the episode, we'll have a cabinet that at least looks like a pinball machine, even if you can't quite play it. Time to take all of this back to the workshop, turn it into a pinball cabinet. on the show today, and we don't usually do a whole lot of woodworking, I thought I'd go ahead and share a fact that uh, some of you probably already know, and for some of you this is going to save your next project. So don't base the design of your project on the nominal dimensions of the lumber at the hardware store, because those aren't the true dimensions of the lumber. If you go to a hardware store, for instance, and pick up a 2x4, don't expect it to be 2 inches by 4 inches. When you measure them, they're actually more like 1.5 by 3.5 inches. So just keep that in mind when you're designing a frame or a body or a cabinet because uh, these aren't going to measure what they're nominally described as.
Okay, so we've basically finished the pinball cabinet. We have the body of the cabinet uh, put together, we have the legs on it, and then we have the head unit on top of the cabinet, uh, but you'll notice that there's no back on the head unit. That's because I'm going to go in and add some bracing, some support structures, and then put some hinges in place so that I can actually remove the back of the head unit to get to it to work on it when it's actually all put together. Also, you'll notice that the rails are hanging off the side of the body right now. Those will be trimmed to length and then screwed in place, and that's what will actually hold the glass down on top of the play field. The rails aren't in place inside the cabinet that hold the play field uh, up off the bottom of the cabinet yet. Uh, that can't be done until I've actually put the play field in there and made sure that those rails won't interfere with any of the mechanisms underneath the play field. The cabinet will get a finished job uh, towards the end of the project. I'll probably pull the legs back off, spray paint the legs a nice spark fun red, spray paint the rails red, and then the cabinet itself will get sanded, primed, and then it'll either get a hand paint job or a vinyl wrap, and I haven't decided how I'm going to handle that yet. So next time, hopefully, I'll get around to designing the play field and showing you at least a prototype of a play field with a ball rolling around. And it'll actually get a little bit of bumping, slapping action, uh, which we didn't get this time. And I'm sorry it's been so long. All we got to do was build the cabinet. But hopefully this has been informative. And if you're building a video pinball cabinet, this also applies. You can build one just like this and then put your monitor inside the cabinet. So uh, until next time, I'm Nick, and this has been Engineering Roundtable. Happy hacking.